Well, originally what I was going to do was I was going to combine my Survivor Series review along with the Raw review for this week. But, uh, but then when I got to thinking about it, I my Survivor Series review lasts a little too long to for me to put this on onto this review, but but with that all being said, I will get going on this week's raw review. Okay, coming off what I thought of what I thought it was a really really lackluster pay per view to to say the least for one of your big four pay per views in Survivor Series. Really, there was only one way you could have started off this show, and that's with the Brockfoss Club. If you, if you if you know anything about about the WWE, that the Breakfast Club rules above all else. And so, with, with that said, you start off with one Randall Keith Orton. He kind of just starts off the show with a promo, and then call calls down the authority to the ring. God and got us. Triple H and Stephanie McMahon. And then the Breakfast Club wouldn't be complete without one John Felix Anthony Cena. So you got him in the ring as well. And then John Cena proposes a match, which is title for title. The WWE title against the World Heavyweight title. And... And stuff and God, they they said they're even they've even been talking about it in recent weeks. So, so Triple H is gonna make something epic at TLC, and you know the IWC is probably hating themselves right about now because oh baby we're gonna get it. It's gonna be John Felix Anthony Cena against Randall Keith Orton in the main event of TLC in a TLC match for both titles, brother. And it's going to be positively epic. But, you know, the only way this could be even more epic is if God himself was a special guest referee. Oh, yes. That would be positively awesome. So your first match of the night was a kind of a rematch of, of Survivor Series. Six-man tag. With the shield against Cody Rhodes, Goldust, and Rey Mysterio. And after the dominating performance by Roman Reigns at Survivor Series, I would have expected him to maybe get the pinfall in this match. But no, it didn't quite happen. But the shield does win the match. Which I Yeah, I, I, I kind of expected that. And but Dean Ambrose ends up getting the pinfall. You know, if you're gonna, I I don't, I think the probably the right guy probably did the job, but why is Ambrose getting the fall here? If you're gonna if you're gonna put the rocket ship up Roman Reigns' ass, you need to have him get the pinfall. I mean, I'm just saying. I mean, as dominant as he was at Survivor Series, I mean, you need to push this fucker to the moon because Roman Reigns fucking deserves it. So he had a Miz TV segment with the special guest host of Monday Night Raw this week, Michael Strahan, the, one of the co-hosts of the Kelly and Michael show. And you know a segment's pretty bad when you get a, start getting a Kelly Ripa chant in the, in the middle of it. But the, God, the, to me this just wasn't a very good segment. E even though he had titles of Neil in it. Trying to do his best Michael Strahan impression, which uh, is like his Titus O'Neil heel again. Um, I know Miz kind of is, but it's like this. this yeah, Titus O'Neil was kind of funny in this segment, but but overall, this segment was not very good. I mean, let's just face face it here. I would have expected him to have maybe his. His co-star from Christmas Bounty, I may, thought maybe he'd talk to her or something. I mean, they did have a little segment later on in the night in the in the backstage, but but yeah, I didn't really get this segment. And what has the potential to be a really epic tag team? Getting getting back to things that were epic, he had Biggie Langston, the the IC champion, and Mark Motherfucking Henry. 
taking on Ryback and Curtis Axel. This match didn't last very long, and nor should have. Uh, it shouldn't have either. Mark Henry with the World Song of Slam, and that's all she wrote. Next, you had the you had a rematch of the Seven on Seven Divas match, and you had, you had you had more you had girls that were on their back about as long as Kelly Kelly was on a good day. The the total Divas won again. That is all. Then you had a match that was set up on the WWE app between Dolph Ziggler and Damian Sandow in your three choice for a street fight, a lumberjack match, or a hardcore match. Okay, um, what really is the difference between a street fight and a hardcore match? Aren't they kind of the same thing? I mean, seriously? But, but really, as far as hardcore matches go, this is actually pretty good. I mean, it was, it was billed as a Hampton Street fight, so so you had you, get, you had an oar involved, you had tennis balls involved, you had a, you probably had Jim Cornette's t tennis racket that, that got used, but all in all, the match was what it was. It was, it was decent for a hardcore match. Damien Sandow got the win, as he probably should have. Before the handicap match between CM Punk, Daniel Bryan, and, the, and the, all three members of the Wyatt family, you got this little promo right before the match started, and this was a pretty epic promo. This is probably one of the highlights of the night for me. You got CM Punk mentioning everybody from the... Talk, talking about being one, one of the GOATs, greatest teams of all, greatest of all teams. Uh, he's talking about the Dicks. <laughs> If you remember them, you're uh, you're you're probably a wrestling nerd like myself. Uh, you had he he mentioned them. He mentioned the Bushwhackers. He mentioned oh God, what was another team he talked about? Oh, he talked about the Rock and Roll Express, the Midnight Express. Yeah, he also mentioned his great his good friend Colt Cabana, who's a great guy, I might add, because I've met him in person, but. But getting into the match, uh, I thought I actually thought this match was better than the than the match at Survivor Series. And even though he had the DQ finish, and Daniel Bryan gets carted off by the members of the Wyatt family, and then when CM Punk goes to help him, or he get he gets speared by Roman Reigns and triple power bomb by the Shield, so. I just want just wonder where they're going from here, or is Punk and Brian gonna have help like, taking on the White Family and the Shield, or what? I'm not really getting what's going on here, but maybe it'll be more clear to me uh, as we get closer to the TLC pay per view. Okay, another match that happened at, at Survivor Series, which is on the pre-show, Kofi Kings against the Miz. What? <laughs> One thing I thought was funny about this at the beginning is that they they both slapped each other at the same time, which, ironically, this is it's kind of a slap in the face to have to have to sit through this. So Miz wins again, and Kofi becomes more relevant all the time. All right, then he had the singles debut of Xavier Woods. He was introduced by Our Truth and. One thing I hope they don't do with Xavier Woods is since he just got called up from NXT, hope they they, they don't make him like a comedy comic relief character. And I, I really hope they don't do that. I hope they make him more serious. But taking on Heath Slater and well, Heath Slater is pretty much the jobber for everybody. So why should that change here? Xavier Woods wins the end. All right, then your main event, which was made by Michael Strahan in that Miss TV segment. Um, Randy, you got Randy Orton in ADR against John Cena in the Big Show. Well, you know, I, I, I had to, I just had to wonder why was Big Show even there? He took a punt. Normally, when Orton punts somebody, aren't they out for like a really long time? I mean, Chris Jericho was out for a year, for God's sake. And 
and Batista was out for a while after he took a punt a few years ago. It's like, and, but you got Big Show on there the next night. Are you serious? I mean, they. I mean, sure they. They're Big Show was selling the the, the yellow effects of, of it last night for, from last night and and getting dropped on his head and getting kicked in the head and all this stuff. So they had him on the outside of the ring and being being looked at by the doctor, but but hey, John Cena gets the pinfall over ADR, so so that's how that ends, and then you get, Cena gets attacked by ADR afterwards, and then you then you get the then you get Orton nailing him with with the WWE title belt, and then he stands over him to end the show. As far as my final thoughts on this show go, it's like, I have a difficult time figuring out what was worse. The Survivor Series pay-per-view or this Raw? God. It's like, neither one was very good. It seemed like, it seemed like this show was basically just a rehashment of what happened at Survivor... of uh, what happened at Survivor Series. It's, I mean, yeah, they changed a couple matches around, but... No, it wasn't really much I liked about this show, to be perfectly honest. I mean, the, the CM Punk Daniel Bryan promo before their match against Wyatt Family, that was very good. And, of course, the fact that Triple H made, made the epic main event for TLC, John Cena against Randy Orton, for with both titles on the line, so... I don't... I'm thinking there's got to be some kind of a screwy finish in, in that match, because... Why would you have some something like a title unification at a feller pay-per-view? I don't know.